Hey folks, welcome back. So I had hoped to uh, move beyond all the metallurgy stuff and uh, do something else this episode, but as I was exploring around looking for uh, some more resources I'm going to need for future episodes, uh, I had a near encounter with <laughs> with a lion who almost got me, but fortunately as I ran away from he ran over a cliff. Um, so that just reminded me that the armor that I'm wearing, even though it's you know, it's just all wrought iron, it's, uh, did I say the iron I'm wearing? The armor I'm wearing uh, just isn't good enough uh, to, to protect me. And I have upgraded my sword to a black steel sword, so it hits a bit better. Actually, let's just show you that. And so you can see the... Rod Iron Sword did 5.75 attack or damage, and the Black Sword does 8, so quite a bit better. I should have really gone up to Red at red Steel, but uh, uh, maybe I still will, but it just seems like a waste to have all these swords sitting here that I'm never going to use. Um, but I do definitely want to go up to the Red Iron uh, Armor, Red Steel Armor rather, because uh, let's have a look here. If we go... <clears throat> Whoops. If we have a look in here, uh, you can see my wrought iron helmet gives me plus two armor, and if I go up to red steel, I get plus three. It's an only an improvement of one, but if we go on the chest plate, I go from plus five to plus eight, so I'm getting three better there. The grease, I'm going from plus four. Whoops. To plus six, I get two better there. And uh, the reason I'm wearing leather boots instead of wrought iron, uh, if you didn't see the earlier episode when I made the boots, is it turns out the wrought iron boots are no better armor. I mean, they're more durable, but they're no better armor. So I've just been wearing these until I wear them out. But so the wrought iron boots, like the leather boots, are just plus one armor. And then here it goes up plus three. So I get quite a bit more protection out of the uh, red steel uh, armor and blue steel has exactly the same numbers so since I'm already set up to do red steel I might as well go for that so I'm going to need an awful lot of pig iron um, I don't know what is like 70 or 80 and uh, and using my current blast furnace where I can only process three ingots at a time is just no good so I'm going to expand it up to its full size first so cue the montage That's done. So now, five, four, I should be able to do 20 of these at a time. I'm not sure. I guess I'll try dumping in 24 for a start. Alright. 20 ore, 24 charcoal. Oh, flux. I don't have my flux with me. Can I reach the, uh, ah. Uh. I've been working with the bloomery, so I've forgotten completely about the flux. Um. And of course I will shoot. Let's try that again. And it came all the way up top. Good. Now just take the excess. Throw it in there. And I've put this uh, fencing up around here and this block at the end because I kept going too far 
and then falling down, missing the stairs and falling down, hurting myself. And especially now that it's too higher, I hurt myself quite a bit if I fall. So that's my protection there. I should really do the same thing on the bloomery over here, but uh, it's less damage and famous last words here, but I shouldn't be using the bloomery much anymore now. All right. Uh, I need to get this candle lit and then the usual waiting thing. So let's see. So I'm going to need, I need to make about 30 red steel, which means I will need 45 black steel. <sighs> I'm going to need 68 pig iron. Yeah. So let's call that 70. I can do now five, woohoo, five at a time here now that I've expanded this thing. So that means I'm going to have to run this 14 times. But that's an improvement over when I could only do three pig iron at a time. Uh, then I would have had to done 23. So, you know, 14 is way better than 23. So, But uh, you won't have to sit around and watch all of it. I'll bring you back when I'm, well, actually it'll be, it'll be another montage thing from this point on of me, uh, processing the pig iron and into the various alloys and then making the armor. So we'll come back when the, uh, when the armor is all done and I can show it off. the last of it okay now let's see what my current so my current armor is plus two seven eleven twelve okay and now i'm going to from twelve to three eleven seventeen twenty nice hey yeah, not that I'm going to, you know, like, dare the lions and the bears to come after me, but at least now, maybe I'll stand a chance against them. Okay, you ready for the big reveal? Nice, huh? Uh huh? Look a little bit like Daredevil, don't I? Actually, now I look a bit more like Iron Man than I did before. Okay, so... Uh, next up is to deal with olives. It's time for us to make olive oil. Well, it's really difficult to see, but there are actually olives on the tree now. We are into the, this very start of autumn. And if you look at the, these leaves here, this block of leaves here, it doesn't have as much dark spots in it as this block here. And you see when I click on it, I get it goes a bit lighter and I get olives out. It's really difficult to see the olives when they're coming in. Does this guy have any? No. Anyway, so that means that it's time to head down to the southern plantation and, uh, and bring in our olives. And I can collect the sugar while I'm there as well. So it's going to be a little bit of a trip, but I will meet you back there. Well, I'm not really sure why all these crops have died, so... I don't even remember what these are here. Red peppers. I don't really care that much about the red peppers or the beans. 
But the sugar cane died. I mean, it shouldn't have gotten too cold. Yeah, temperature is 26.3. The min 21. I don't know. Maybe there's just some seasonal point at which it's not allowed to grow. I.e., this, this has me completely baffled as to why these things have died here. I thought they would grow all year round or... Maybe there's a limit to how long a ripe crop can sit in the ground because these have been sitting here quite a while. Now, I did collect some already. Uh, I did harvest some uh, earlier on and take them back and make sure of them. Uh, just to show, you can tell when they're ripe because they have the four dark bars. One there, two, three, four. So the, or when they're ripe, when they're fully grown. But uh, these have gone and died. Anyway, um, but... That's fine. We're here for... Uh, no, I'm not going to gain more olives out of these. Okay, well, I've replanted all of my crops out here at the uh, southern plantation. Um, so, since I'm not going to gain more olives out of these guys, and I'd like to have a lot more olives to work with without having to wait another year, uh, what I'm going to do is... Let's get crops the crops map here is I'm gonna go visit to the olive trees that I found along the way I mean there's one there for example I mean they're like I gotta head back this way anyway so I might as well stop in at those and harvest them while we're in the right season for it Well, I'm reaping the uh, the fruits of my previous actions, I guess, here. Um, so there are, there are olives here growing on here, but not very many because, of course, <laughs> when I last visited the tree, I took off all its branches trying to get more olive saplings for my plantation. So the tree doesn't have very many... Uh, leaf blocks in which to grow the olives but still I got eight off of this tree and eight off of the other one and my one at home and I should be one I should be able to get at least one more harvest right yeah I should be able to get one more harvest uh, so I'll head back home and hopefully get another harvest off that and then maybe just toward the end of the month just toward the end of autumn come back out and hit these two trees again and uh, and then we'll be able to uh, work on processing all this stuff and finally have some oil to work with make some oil lamps yay all right I will see you back home okay um, the there's a bunch of prep work that we're gonna have to do to be able to uh, f finish working with this olive oil it's it's actually well, uh, it ends up being fairly complicated in the details. So the first thing is we're going to want to have some uh, oil lamps. And we want to have them ready before we create the olive oil for reasons which will become apparent later on. So uh, I've gone and prepared some uh, unshaped tin. Now the nice thing about the lamps is if we do them here... Uh, If you have a look, you can have them made out of pretty much any metal. And that includes, let's find a few here, blue, black, platinum. So platinum. Now that was true also in classic TFC, is you could make uh, lamps out of platinum. And normally platinum can't be used for anything else. But here in uh, TNG, you can also have them made out of some other stuff. Like let's find here, tin, silver rose gold rose gold for example there we go lead lamp now there's basically no other use for lead right so if you have your galena deposits that you're getting lead out of now you can there's actually a use for them so you could make uh make lamps anyway so we're just waiting for this uh there we go let's see get to cool off to the point where we can make it into something and we're making it the only thing we can 
use tin uh, tin ingot for other than making alloys is make a lamp so that ends up being the default oops there we go so we have our tin lamp I've actually gone and created three others and I made the most silver simply because I have a lot of silver it's in your room okay we can get rid of the ingot mold now and I can get rid of that and I don't need to be wasting charcoal there charcoal's hard enough to come by okay now the next thing is the olives themselves So the olives have to be ground up into olive paste, and for that we use the quern, as usual for grinding things up. There we go, olive paste. And uh, I already had some olive paste. The nice thing about the olive paste is that it's not a food, so it doesn't rot. So you don't have to, like... You don't have to hurry and rush to try and get it processed because there is no best before date on it. So that's, that's one of the best things about this whole process is that you can build up your olive paste over time. But as you can see, I've got another 41 olives here that, uh, can I stack them? Well, I could stack them if I want to, but I'm not going to bother. But I got another 41 olives here that I've got to grind up. Um, and you're not going to want to sit through all that. So I'll either time lapse this or bring it back in. Probably just fade out and bring it back in when I'm done. Okay, so that gives me 50 olive paste. The next thing we're going to want to do is we need to make some jute nets. Now really, you want you want a lot of these. Uh, if at all possible, you'd like to have at least 40 and 80 would be preferable. Now, as it turns out, it takes, uh, each net takes five of these jute fiber to make a jute net like that. See, and I don't even have enough to make 40. So I'm just going to have to, uh, do the best I can here. I'm going to make 16, 18, 19. So. I have a long ways to go. At my southern plantation, I'm growing a bunch more jute, so... I mean, it won't do me much good for this this season's harvest of all those, but it means uh, next season, next year, I'll be able to make enough. I'll be able to have at least... at least 40 nets, I hope. <laughs> but yeah, okay, so I've got my 19 nets, and the last bit of prep we need to do is we're going to need some barrels. And I think I can get away with just three. Okay, now let's get these out of the bottom of the inventory here. Okay, I'm going to hit the sack before heading out. I'll bring you back in. Head out to where, you might ask. Uh, well, what we need to be able to do everything that we want to do is we need a source of hot spring water and we need a source of fresh water, preferably very close to each other. Now, if I look at my map, I've uh, gone and checked these things out already. I have a hot spring here, but it's up on top of the mountain, so even if there's fresh water down in here, we'd have to run down to get it. Uh, I got another one here, but this is all salt water in here. And I got another one here, and same deal, this is all salt water here. And uh, this, another one here, but there's no uh, fresh water anywhere nearby. Uh, so as it turns out, the only one that I know of at the moment with fresh water nearby is way down here by our plantation southern plantation this hot spring here and there's some some water in here very close by actually might be able to see it 
I think it's in here. Oh, there it is there. Um, this water here, as it turns out, unfortunately, is salt water. So that's about the best, best we can do of the hot springs I know. So I'm going to head down there and uh, I will meet you when I'm there. Okay, welcome to the hot spring. Well, that's the first thing we want to do here is let's set our barrels out. Just get them out of our inventory. Okay. So we have our olive paste. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run through one. Just do, do a single olive paste just to show the entire process. And also to highlight what some of the problems are we're going to start running into. So... Each olive paste requires at least 125 milliwatt buckets of hot spring water. All right, let's grab a bucket. So, so that's a uh, that's going to be a thousand millibuckets hot spring water. But that's fine. We can have more than than we need, just as long as we have enough. So we throw that in there, seal it off, and it's 8:04 now, and it takes two hours for that to process. So at 10:04. Oh, we got some fruit up there. Good. So at 10.04, we can come back and uh, see what we've got. Well, we know what we will have. We will have olive water. Meanwhile, I will collect this fruit. And I'm going to chop down these trees as well because they are inhibiting the growth of that lovely fruit tree. Ooh. I'll be careful I don't destroy my uh, my barrels down there by accident. And there we go. Now that apple tree is free to thrive. Yeah, I'm not sure why, but my apple trees and my peach tree back at the farm, they just don't seem to be coming in. And, like, I've had them for over a year now. And they just don't seem to be growing at all, and so I'm not sure if, what's going on with that. Anyway, that should be more than two hours, right? Oh, apparently not. Ah, now it is. There we go. Okay. So now we have... That gave us 125 millibuckets of olive oil water. Okay, and this is where we start to have our problems, or this is where things start getting complicated. The quantities, 125 millibuckets is less than a bucket. Like a bucket is a thousand millibuckets. That means we can't pick it up. Okay, so uh, if we wanted to make more olive water, like process more olive paste, we can't use this bucket because it's already in use, right? So we would have to go to another bucket. All right. Or sorry, another barrel. All right. But let's continue processing this anyways. So for every 125 millibuckets of olive oil water, we need one jute net. So as soon as we put the jute net in, boom, immediately processes and it becomes a dirty jute net. And now we have 25 millibuckets of olive oil. Okay, so we had 125 millibuckets of olive oil water. And after filtering it through the jute net, we're down to 25 millibuckets of olive oil, one-fifth as much. And that's the same problem as with the olive oil water, is that's not enough to fill a bucket, so we can't get it out of there. Um, and in fact, the only way we can get it out of there is by filling a lamp with it. So I'm going to uh, do this. And you can see now it's empty. Now, the interesting thing here, this is the tin lamp. So the tin lamps are supposed to take up to 250 millibuckets of olive oil. And there was only 50 in there, or sorry, only 25 in there. So this guy isn't full. He's only got 25 millibuckets of olive oil in him, but there's no way to tell that, right? Okay, so uh, let's go through the process one more time to demonstrate one other problem. Uh, let's use two separate barrels here. 
Okay, we'll put an all the paste in that one. Seal it up. And we'll put an all the paste in that one. Seal it up. And then we'll wait another two hours. Now, we've got these things which are dirty jute nets. What do we do with them? For that, we'll need this other barrel. Okay, we got to clean them. And to do that, uh, this is not the nicest place to be walking around. All right, I could buy that. Here's some fresh water over here. We need fresh water to clean them. And again, a distressingly dangerous area to be walking. Oh, it's not that deep, though. Well, that's not so bad then. Uh, anyway, I can fiddle with this in a moment. Okay, uh, we set up our barrel here, and now we get some fresh water. And everything with with the olive oil processing seems to happen in units of 125 millibuckets. But anyway, so to clean this jute net, for each dirty jute net, we need 125 millibuckets of fresh water. So again, we've got eight times that much, but that's fine. And we seal it in here and it only takes an hour, I think. So at 1608, we'll be able to pull out our clean net. Whoops. Just give myself something to do here. Making the world a safer place. I really have to do something about this mouse. Okay, it was 1608, right? How are we doing? Oh, uh, we got a couple more minutes to go. There we go, 1608. And now we have a clean jute net again, and it can go back in the stack. I guess actually what I can do is... Go ahead and fill this guy up. And then we can take him back with us, so we'll have the fresh water with us. Over at the hot spring. Ah, you had to go in the water on me? That wasn't nice. Okay, back over to the hot spring we go. Now, the next thing you got to watch out for here is so we've got 125 millibuckets of olive oil water here now if I put two jute nets in I lose one right it only took one to clean the olive oil water that was in there and that gives me one dirty jute net and then any excess nets I have get lost so you really want to be careful about that now we can throw these guys in here for cleaning they'll be done in an hour So I've now got 25 mil buckets of olive oil here and 25 mil buckets of olive oil here. Okay, so you might be thinking, okay, well, you know, like try and process as much as you can, but it's not that big a deal, you know, if you have to use multiple buckets and process it in multiple batches and then you can just haul all the buckets back. Okay, but let's have a look at this now. So we have two buckets here which each have just a tiny, tiny amount of olive oil in them, 25 millibuckets. So we say, hey, let's head home. Oh, look how slow we're moving, right? We're overburdened. In TFC, if you have two buckets, or I keep saying buckets, if you have two barrels that have stuff in them, it doesn't matter how little they have in them, you're overburdened. And you can't even jump, right? You can't jump up a block or anything. So really, you can only carry one barrel back at a time. So keeping in mind where I am, right? I am, <laughs> I'm way the hell down here at the plantation. So if I want to get my, my tiny amounts of olive oil here back to back home, I have to carry the one bucket barrel all the way back and then come all the way back here and get this one, right? So fortunately we don't have to do that. So that's why I mean, fortunately, I brought along enough lamps, right? And that's why I said we want to have a bunch of lamps with us, is because the lamps, we have one thing we can fill the olive oil into. Oops. 
seal the barrel here. So now we have like this this barrel is now empty. And where's the other one that has a lot of oil in it? And grab another lamp. <clears throat> oh actually here's something I wanted to try. So we know that this silver lamp that we already filled up here has 25 mil buckets of olive oil in it. If I hit it again, will it absorb even more? Okay. So I can't tell, but in theory, this olive oil lamp now has 50 mil buckets of olive oil in it. Okay. But now these are these barrels are both empty, so I can grab them if I want to. Um, ah, our jute nets are now clean. Okay, so this is all a bit of a pain, right? Um, what it means is we want to try and process, definitely means we want to try and process the olive paste into olive oil in as large a quantity as we can. So, uh, example here is I have 47 that I'd like to process all at once. But the thing is, is that for basically for every olive paste that you process or you have in a single barrel, uh, that's going to generate 125 millibuckets of olive oil water. And for each of that, those are going to need a jute net. So I only have 18 jute nets, right? So the most olive oil that I can process at once is right now is 18. So I would have to do this in batches of 18 and I clearly don't have enough olive oil lamps for that. So what I'm going to end up doing right now is I'm going to, uh, I don't know. I, well, I'll, I'll probably end up just having to cart them back one at a time. Or actually, I've got a better idea. I'll get to that in a moment. So um, what you really want to be able to do is you want to have at least 40 jute nets. And the reason for that is that will let you process 40 olive paste at a time. 40 olive paste will give you 1,000 millibuckets worth of olive oil after you've filtered it through the nets, which means you can then pick it up with a bucket. And so that's really what you want to do. You want to get up to at least 40 jute nets, and then that'll allow you in batches of 40 to process a bucket's worth, and then you can transfer the olive oil between barrels like so you can empty it out of this barrel into another barrel and then process the next uh, 40 paste and then transfer it and transfer it and so on like that then like let's say uh, that I actually had 40 jute net so then I would be able to process this 40 and transfer it you know into a barrel if I want to or I could keep it above but, but let's say Let's say instead I had like 127. Okay, so I do 40. That's a bucket's worth of oil I get out of it. I transfer that into another barrel. I do another 40, take the bucket, transfer it into the other barrel. Take another 40, take a bucket, tra transfer it into the other barrel. So now I have a barrel with three buckets of oil, 300 mil, 3,000 mil buckets of oil in it. And then I've got these last seven to process. So I would process them. That's going to end up, I don't want to calculate it, some s small amount of oil. I could then use a bucket to transfer the three buckets of oil out of that other barrel into this one. And so this one would have 3,000 and some odd millibarrels of olive oil in it. And now I'd be down to just one barrel with all of the olive oil in it. And that I could transport around without being encumbered. Since I don't have 40 jute nets right now, what I'm going to do is I'm, I won't bother processing the rest of this olive paste right now. Uh, we've been through the process enough, I think, so you understand how it goes. So I'll wait until I can harvest more jute and make more make enough jute nets to you know, properly process this remaining olive paste. Then that'll happen off camera. Okay, the other thing I want to show is uh, the behavior of this hot spring water. Um, yeah, you can see here. 
as you can see all this is flowing on top now because i've been taking out so normally if this was fresh water or even seawater and i took a bucket's worth of water out of there the two source blocks on either side would then fill that in with another source block right but that doesn't happen with the with this spring water is let me find another one where it's up near the surface yeah here's another one so you can see that's a source block that's a source block that's a source block i take it out of here i can throw it in there and so this is no longer a source block it's being flowed into and i can no longer collect from it either um so the only way you can get lots of hot spring water is by collecting out where it's at least too deep right out here in the middle and then you can keep collecting from the same area because it's actually collecting not from the surface block but from the source block underneath and those do seem to replenish normally but so that's another kind of oddity is that if you have a very uh, shallow hot spring like it's all just one deep uh, you're not going to be able to process a whole lot of olive oil before you've depleted the hot spring so just kind of very weird the way that that works so all right so what i'm going to do right now even though it's tedious as all get out is i'm just going to head back home um so i can set up my olive oil, my olive oil lamps now the one thing to keep in mind so these two are empty is this one has 25 millibuckets of olive oil in it and this one should have 50. so what i'm going to do is i'm going to set them out and we can remember because one's tin and the other one's silver and we'll see how long they last now a full lamp has 250 millibuckets of olive oil in it and it's supposed to last 8,000 hours so my was it tin my tin lamp which only has 25 that's one tenth as much in theory that's only going to burn for 800 hours and if the silver one really has 50 millibuckets in it that's going to burn for 1600 hours now that's those are both even at those levels that's a long time 800 hours i think each day is 10 hours long so that's going to be 80 days but we can go back and we'll set them both up in places and then for you know those of you who are regular viewers then we'll be able to see in what episode <laughs> they finally go out okay i will see you back home and we're back at shea maya knife let's grab ourselves oh fence posts are up here now whoops there okay so this guy here is one of the more annoying of my outdoor lamps so let's put him because i because he's down below the level of the uh, he's basically hidden by the bushes right so let's try putting the tin lamp on him Let's get the, uh, there we go. And I'm, where will we put, there's another one over here that is similarly hidden. If you don't light the, the torch before you pick it up, then it turns into a stick, <laughs> which is why I'm doing that, so. So we'll do the silver oil lamp here. It should have twice as much. There we go. And to turn them on, turn the radio on. I'm going to need a fire starter. There we go. That one's on. And so is that one. Cool. And don't look like much here. And I'll bring it back at night just so you can we can see them working, because that's pretty much all it's going to happen today, or in this episode at any rate. So we will. I've got all these crops to rip up anyway. So 
I will do that while I wait for night to fall and I'll bring you back in so you can see the glorious light produced by the olive oil lamps that doesn't have to be <laughs> we don't have to go around and reset reset them like we do torches every 24 hours so like I say in theory 80 days before the first one goes out before the tin one goes out tin lamp goes out so we'll see oh I should check the date whoops whoops yeah so this is December 1st well what's 80 days gonna be 10 months June July August September October so it will be October of a thousand and four in theory before that first lamp goes out and sometime in a thousand and five before the next one goes out so we'll see well uh you know put a pin in your calendar for that date and we'll see what happens with it all all right so i'll bring you back uh come nightfall okay what's uh we're pretty much into the deep of night here and you can see they get really good light i've knocked out uh you know any of the nearby torches so they don't interfere and you can see you get we get a very good light out of it i think it's supposed to be light level 15 which is pretty much as bright as you're going to get uh, daylight maybe a 16 sunlight is 16 maybe but so they provide a good light and they should last a long time uh, they can get rained on and they won't go out so this is a huge improvement or it will be once i can get uh once i can get enough lamps up everywhere and then i won't have to be running around or replacing the uh, or resetting the torches all the time um in theory it'll be helpful in mines as well but i don't know uh like keep in mind right we have to make a lantern out of some kind of metal for each one and then we have to go and distribute them and for the most part the mines just sit there right it's i only any particular mine i only go back to very rarely so i don't know it's going to be all that worthwhile to leave uh lamps behind in mines now definitely while working in them it would make sense to to take some with me but then really i should uh, collect them up uh, when i'm done now i guess the one other thing to show is they can be turned off you just right click on them and they go out and in the uh, in classic tfc right clicking would also turn them back on but here in tng you have to like reignite them with a uh, with a fire starter i assume a flint and steel would work as well all right so we have finally at long last gotten to the point where we have a better lighting solution than these bloody torches at least for longer term lighting now there are even better ones in our future um and one of those is going to require that we look at blue steel i kept saying i have no reason to go to blue steel but actually there is there is a reason um but we'll get into that in another episode I think this is more than enough, especially with all the 125 millibucket and 25 millibucket and 50 millibuck calculations we've had to do. So that's enough to wrap your brain around for one episode. So I hope you enjoyed it. Maybe learn something and I'll see you back for the next one. Bye now.